So today we're going to be continuing to take a look at a scenario where civilization starts over. We are now on episode 23 of this series, and in the last episode, we saw the whole world get explored, which was cool, I guess. So there's no more gray areas. All that is to be discovered has been discovered. Colonies expanded in North America, especially over here in the northeastern part of Canada, as well as South America and Indonesia. And at the end of the video, we saw the start of the Amsterdam Conference, which is a big group of countries who are going to go down to Africa and do very bad things basically our timelines version of the scramble for africa anyway if you guys do enjoy today's video make sure to leave a like on it and subscribe to the channel if you're new all the support is greatly appreciated as we're trying to get the 200,000 subscribers by the end of this year and without further ado let's go ahead and jump straight into this scenario so the amsterdam conference is underway and all of the countries in attendance including the purple team have decided to go ahead and divide up africa into many different colonies all controlled by the european powers this conference is taking place like a hundred years before it happened in real life but the industrial revolution kicked off a lot earlier than it did in real life as well so these countries are a lot more advanced compared to the countries which were around in our timeline around this time so how does the amsterdam conference play out well all european countries also agree with the northern african union right here that they will leave them alone and not colonize them because they are a top power they've had really no issues with europe other than like the purple team so but everyone else is fair play so countries will start to make their claim the first country to submit their claim is actually going to be the purple team if you remember they were pretty indecisive about this but as time went on they did decide to join in they set their claim over here in this dark purple country wanting to take over this greater northern mediterranean area of africa the next country to submit a claim is actually the northern italian country and this is where the trouble is already going to start to begin it, they are going to claim about half of what the purple country just claimed but it is a lot smaller of an area so this will have to work itself out later on next up we have the dark cyan country they submit their claim next and it's a little bit ridiculous but they claim all of this portion of africa now uh, i didn't mention this but the countries have to agree in unison on the claims uh, and that's simply because they want to prevent any wars from breaking out over this they'll do their best but not to you know foreshadow or anything but it's not going to work too well next up we have the brown team they will submit their claim next and they work together with the dark cyan team to essentially create a border which makes them claim all of southern africa a very large portion of the continent so the stronger countries at least are getting a lot of land out of this and there's not a lot left for the other ones the green french country will make a claim over here in egypt going down the nile basin and claiming all of this land for themselves the dark purple team will make a claim over here where the brown country is in africa the light blue country will claim the rest of it and then we have the red irish country claiming over a large portion of this coastal area which obviously creates an overlap and will create issues later on so now the european powers have officially claimed all the land that they want in africa there's a lot of overriding claims but they all come together and agree to take the areas which do not overlap so what i mean by that is that for example the dark cyan team claims all of this land up here no one else claims it so they can go ahead and just take it for themselves but they are not allowed to claim this area down here because the red team also has a claim over that and that could create disputes so what we see from this is basically just only two countries getting their claims and once again it's going to be the two stronger ones the dark cyan country and the brown country who will claim all of southern africa just like that so i Obviously, the dark brown country has an issue here, and that is that they claim over countries which already exist, being this dark br uh, purple, man, I'm colorblind dark purple country here and then this gray country over here so they will send their armies and a bunch of people to settle this land down to africa and they will start doing what europeans do best sorry that's that's really mean they'll do what old europeans do best and that is take over lands which are not theirs i'm not throwing shade at europeans i'm throwing shade at their ancestors i'm also going to use this opportunity to tidy up the border with this blue country here and then we have the dark purple country here who was experiencing some um you know growth and development within however the european powers are here so sorry about your future plans they fall over to the brown team and now the brown team is probably the largest country in the world maybe not though because the lime team has a lot of land and so does the dark cyan team but i don't think they're the largest uh yeah there's a lot of stuff going on in the world the largest country is probably up for debate i don't know but these two european powers get what they want and uh, now we look at the claims again, we can see that they still claim a little bit more. Also, the claim lines aren't perfect, but we're working on that. The red team obviously has their claim and they want land. And uh, I think the dark sign team and the brown team would be okay with giving them some of their claims up. 
Uh, so they just need to work that out. So all three of these countries sit down together in the Brown team to draw up this new claim and attempt to make everyone involved happy. And this is what they're able to agree on, which is actually really good for the red team. The red team's leader is actually able to twist the hand of the dark cyan team country to, you know, influence the brown team to give them a little bit more land than what they originally claimed. And the red team gets all of this, which is a big chunk of land. That allows for the other two countries to finish their claims, that one being that of the dark cyan teams, and then this one down here being the brown team. Obviously, there is a, a big pocket of land right here. We will get to that later on, uh, but no one ever initially claimed that, so it's not being filled in as of now. Now for the other countries. This is where it gets interesting. Obviously, there is one major overlapping claim within this whole thing, and that is that of the two Italian countries, the Northern Union and the Southern Original Purple Team. Now, let's power scale these guys. Who's stronger than the other? Let's see. Population. The Purple Team has almost triple the population of the northern italian team however in terms of military the purple team only has a slight advantage technology wise they are about the same politically the uh, northern italian government is a lot more stable so how do they settle this overlapping claim well both of them are told to sit down as the rest of the amsterdam conference members decide how this is exactly going to look and they ultimately draw something up that looks like this and uh the northern italian country is not happy about it they don't have the political reach and the influence that the purple team has. Historically, these guys are huge, so obviously they're going to have a little bit more power against others in terms of diplomacy. And uh, the northern Italian country is left with a very tiny claim, and they are not happy about it. But for now, they're not going to complain about it. Instead, they'll go through with the invasion. In fact, they even go through with a joint invasion with the purple team. The two countries at this point are not liking of each other. In fact, their relations have turned pretty hostile, but they are essentially forced to invade this country together because of their claims. So purple team troops will make a landing on the north of this dark purple country, who I think at one point was, was definitely a part of the red team. They might've been a part of the purple team, but I, I don't really remember. Also on the topic of the purple team, uh, you guys made a good point in the last video. I said that there really was no Rome in this uh, series. And you guys pointed out that the purple team was essentially Rome and that I even said that it was kind of Rome. Now, you're not wrong. It looked like Rome, but what I was talking about was more so of like the, the you know, the ginormous influence that Rome has on our modern day world. Uh, the purple team didn't last as long as Rome did. The purple team, I don't think, was as strong as Rome was. And they definitely didn't set a bunch of like, you know, markers and milestones that the Roman Empire did in real life. The purple team had no major influence on language or on religion, which, by the way, religion looks like this. Um... I always forget that there's a religion map. I'm, I probably won't be using this too much because honestly, um, it's just, it's, it's a lot. Maybe in the future, who knows? But these two countries finish their invasion of the purple country and then fill in their claims. So this is what their new claim looks like in Northern Africa. And now it's on to the Egyptian country who is actually, um, they're a lot stronger than the purple country was. If we take a look at the claims, the purple country obviously claims a little bit of it, but who also claims a little bit of it is the French country. So the French country will actually move first before the purple country does and start invading Egypt, taking over the Nile Basin area and moving down the river river basin did i say basin twice i did say basin twice these guys' army hasn't been used too much in history i mean it's been used a little bit but not as much as some of the other countries who are attending this meeting uh, but they're very swift and very efficient they take over all of the major areas of the green team country but surprisingly enough the orange team country will get involved in this war and take over this area of the sinai peninsula the green team doesn't exactly know how to react to this but for now they don't go into their territory and don't do anything obviously they claim the sinai peninsula but they'll just hold off for now and continue invading the green country eventually the purple country will finally get involved taking over the rest of it and these two countries can agree on an official border since their claims really didn't have one and that official border looks like this so at this point there are only five original african countries this continent is mostly getting filled up by european powers at this point and we are unfortunately about to witness another one fall as the green country continues their col colonial expansion and fills in their claim totally taking over this country right here which is like yellowy something so there's another one down and now let's take a look at the claims map once more we have about two more areas left and that is uh, all involving the brown country here the dark purple country will make the first move invading and taking out this red team country which has been here for a very long time at this point but unfortunately they are invaded and conquered and now we have this country right here the light cyan blue thing uh, they will start to invade the brown team country right next to where the, uh, the these guys were. And they will mostly focus in on the populated areas, taking over major cities and moving towards the interior of the country, taking yet another major city. They then start to move around, but start to suffer a lot of casualties and their resource supplies start to run very low 
as the brown team puts up a fairly good resistance towards the European invaders. Now, this doesn't necessarily stop the uh, light sign country from still getting a lot of land. In fact, they get a majority of their country. However, the brown team is able to hold out on their coastal area and the light sign team is forced to make a peace treaty with them, stopping any further aggression into their territory. Now, just before that peace treaty is signed, the uh, dark purple team will go ahead and take the rest of their claimed area. And now we can take a look at a peace treaty with an African nation instead of just full annexation and conquering so in that peace treaty this is what africa is left looking like uh the brown team loses almost all of their territory however they do hold on to their coastal area in the horn of africa uh which gives way for them to be you know rebuilt in the future having ocean access is a very important part of their existence and they keep a lot of that now that does mean that all of the claims at this point have been filled in and there is still a very large portion of africa left untouched so yeah there is the first part of the amsterdam conference taking place the other half will take place later on in the video uh, probably not too later on though because this video is already pretty long but let's take a look at another part of the world real quick and that is actually going to be here in the balkans the two halves of the farmers union are gearing up to go to war with each other now remember the farmers union suffered an unfortunate fate along with the red team and they were forced to split into two and given new governments each the two governments both agree that the farmers union should be reunited into one country however they disagree on about how exactly that's going to occur and under which government it will happen ultimately they decide that they can't unite under one and that they're going to have to go to war with each other they're also kind of forbidden from reuniting so this doesn't really count as reuniting instead it's just more of a war so the left half will start to invade the right half the left team starts to see a lot of success in invading their counterpart but of course the counterpart will push back against them this was a uh, surprise attack the peach team which I'm, I guess I'm gonna call them the peach team now. They were expecting it, but they weren't expecting it this soon. And over time, this just becomes a back and forth war until eventually the left half will capture the capital of the right half, leading to the orange country to start an invasion of this part of the country. The white country is kind of like against this, saying that, you know, this isn't your land, this isn't your people, but they will be unable to stop the orange team at this time. And that is because the purple team is getting the fourth party. They will start to invade the white country and even take over their capital city, leading to a big old Balkan mess. We will also see this uh, pinkish purple country get involved as well, moving into white team's territory. Eventually, the white team will be able to set up their armies and set up a defensive front over here, while also finishing off the rest of the right, right country. Oh my god. The orange country will claim the rest, and we can get a peace treaty done between all of these countries here, and uh, it's going to be a really messy one. So in this peace treaty, we see that the farmers union is sort of reunited, but they also lose a little bit of land to the outside powers, including the orange team, purple team, and uh, mixture team. So this is what they're looking like now. Province map, we can see it looks like this. And the white team is forced to relocate their capital to the old capital of the right side of their union, which is kind of ironic in a way. But the Balkans now looks something like this and uh hatred is growing between all these guys so uh i guess some things never change right now over to this part of europe we see the russian country which we haven't really talked about in a little bit they will continue to expand their growing country now reaching over to the midway point of asia they're still doing their old strategy however uh movement to their country has you know drastically dropped there's not a lot of people moving there anymore which makes it a lot harder for them to continue to expand their large country as they are right now but for now i think this is the extent to which they will expand to and we're not going to make them any bigger in the future now we go over to the lime team they will continue to colonize oceania taking more and more of these islands for themselves and reaching over to papua new guinea or the island of new guinea but now we have an interesting plot event happening and that is that a couple of lime team sailors who are out exploring the various caribbean islands get lost at sea in the middle of the pacific ocean now if you're going to be lost at sea in an ocean you definitely don't want to be in the pacific ocean because that thing is huge but these sailors make their way all the way around landing on various islands and using their resources to survive eventually the currents push them all the way over to south america where they make a landing in northern chile now as far as they know this is a brand new continent uh, they don't have any contact or connection with anyone else but after sending explorers out to you know figure out where they're at they make contact with both this colony and this colony which lets them know that they are in fact in south america and that you know the world is probably definitely round that was already established with korea you know finding it but with them finding it as well that kind of you know closes any plot holes that they could have had in the earth's shape this thing is round so yeah the lime team now has a settlement in the north of chile now this thing isn't going to be very furbished uh the 
Furbished? Did I just make that word? Is that a word? It is a word. I don't think I used it right though. It's not going to be very um, cared for. The Lion team isn't really worried about it. Uh, there is a few hundred people here at this point. They sent some more people over to kind of, you know, make it an official thing. Uh, but for the next couple of years, they will just kind of not really worry about it too much and leave them to fend for themselves. Now we can head back over to Africa and finish up the scramble. First off, though, we have the Northern African country making a push to preserve as much African land as possible as they are very against the European powers invasion of their continent. Now, they weren't going to stop them because they really can't. It was going to happen one way or another. And uh, unfortunately, they just had to sit aside and watch as their continent was massacred. Presumptively, probably definitely. But they take over about a quarter of North Africa. And then the other European countries start making even more claims, this time in more respect to another. This prevents a lot of possible overlapping. Now down south here, we have an agreement taking place between the brown team and the red team. The dark cyan team is also involved in that treaty, so these guys are working together very well. But the brown team essentially claims all this area away, taking over any possibility for the red team to get it. But in exchange for that, the red team is granted by the Dark Cyan team the ability to move up into this area over here because otherwise the Dark Cyan team would have taken it for themselves. Now, what does this Dark Cyan team get out of that exchange? Well, they don't really get anything. They already have a massive colony and claim, so they're okay with, you know, not taking all of it for themselves, although they would probably like to. So they make their border look something like this, and that is it for the Dark Cyan team. That is all the land that they will be taking. And as you can see, it has begun. The uh, straight line issue has begun. They also overlap with the claim of this green country here which could lead to some issues in the future uh but for now they're not really too worried about it they just overlap their claims the northern italian country finishes up their claim and now all that is left is this part of africa over here now before the europeans can get to it this country down here which just got its independence in the last episode will make a move for themselves preserving any land that they wanted to get in the future as the Europeans take the surrounding lands for themselves. So in the end, Africa ends up looking like this, completely divided up, but now finally completely filled in. Now, one thing that's worth talking about is that this country was never invaded, and that's because the, the European powers were afraid that the Lime team might have come to the help of them should they have been uh, invaded. The Lime team probably would not have since they just gave them up and weren't really worried about them leaving and, you know, declaring their own independence. Uh, but they didn't really want to take that risk. So these guys are allowed to remain alive. The Brown team will now go over to Madagascar and start colonizing a portion of it. And the Lime team is like, whoa, why are you doing that? And, uh, well, a phrase I've been using a lot recently, you snooze, you lose. Africa is now completely filled in. Uh, but unfortunately by outside invaders from Europe and this is what the world is looking like now a lot different and a lot more filled in and we are getting very close to completely filling in this world map now I know that uh, the world when the scramble for Africa happened the world was a lot more filled in than it is here uh, It happened in the late 1800s and uh, you know America was as a country was a lot more established they were you know dealing with their post-civil war stuff but they were still very large they claimed almost all of their current land now. And, uh, it, you know, America's not filled in at this point. Neither is South America or any of Australia. So, obviously, this happened a little too soon. But I don't think it's that big of an issue. Because, like I said, this timeline is not really a reflection of our um, current one. It takes aspects of our current real-life timeline and, you know, uses them. So, for example, we have, you know... The big old U.S. colony over here. We have what, you know, the whole point of this video was the scramble for Africa. That happened in real life too. Uh, we just did our own version of it. The various Chinese wars, you know, a broken up Japan. And then we also have our own things happening. Like, you know, a very disunited Britain. Throughout history, Britain, well, at least in a late, late history, it was also kind of divided. Uh, but there was a certain point where it just became, you know, smacked together into one. And it's been that way. For many years, we had our own Rome, but it wasn't Rome. It was a very uh, shallow version of Rome. We have our own Russia in a way. But anyway, that will do it for today's civilization video. So I really hope that you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure to show some support. You know, I was trying to get this video to 2,000 likes. I honestly don't know how many likes the videos usually average. So that might be a little low. It might be a little high. Who knows? Let's try to get there at least. Uh, and uh, let me know in the comments what you want to see happen in the next video. Obviously, we have the scramble for Africa done. And uh, honestly, there might be a scramble for America next. I've been using your guys' ideas in these videos. And if I do use them, I usually give your comment a heart so you know. Um, yeah. So, once again, if you enjoyed it, make sure to show some support. And I will see you guys in the next video.
And of course, thank you to all the super fans. This includes Mr. Bonk7, Patrick Clauser, Switzerland Lowell Productions, German Edits, Georgi Badev, Kylie Speaks Plays, Hammer Toad45, Connor the Gamer, Poland Country Ball, Yakko, Nevada Garbage Trucks, and DW Cool Dude. Once again, thank you guys.